Welcome back everybody, Jack Clips Painting here with part 3 of our Karn the Betrayer series. So here he is from last time, just got most of his basic colors blocked in and we highlighted those up with the airbrush. We're going to start off with Decayed Metal as the base for all of our gold trim. All the metals on this guy are going to be scale 75 because I just love how they work, they go on like a dream. Uh, it makes painting gold trim on models like this guy just such such an easy experience. Like I can't I can't tell you enough how amazing they are. And uh, we're just gonna thin it down with some water. You can get these metallics incredibly thin, and they still cover great, which is probably the main reason that I like painting with them so much. Is they just work so good. It's, uh, it's like painting gold trim on easy mode. I'm just going to work this into pretty much all of the gold trim areas on the model and then we're going to start highlighting up with some brighter metallics. So you can see here we got the decayed metal on everything that we want to end up being gold. And then we're going to go up to our next color. So we're going to be using Necro Gold, which is a, a black gold that I normally start off as a base coat, but I want to do something a little bit different with Karn here because he is a Chaos model and his stuff is supposed to be super old. That's why we started off with the, the Decayed Metal, and now we're going to the Necro Gold. And we're just going to be hitting some of the areas that we want to be shinier, uh, leaving the Decayed Metal showing through in places that are going to be in pure shadow, and just hitting everything like... You can see I'm hitting the tops of his little corn headdress and I'll be hitting the tops of spikes and uh, areas of his gold trim that we want to end up being shinier because it's going to reflect light more. So we're just going to do that over the whole model. You can see him here with the necro gold laid in. You can tell that a lot of the parts around him are definitely a lot more shiny than they were with just the straight decayed metal. And I got a little bit ahead of myself uh, when I was doing the recording process and I painted those chains without hitting record. So we're just going to do another piece with our scale 75 black metal and uh, go ahead and do the plasma pistol that he's got just so you can see how easy it's going to go on and kind of how I'm laying it down on there before we cut to the next step where you're going to see all of the stuff that's metallic painted in. And Necro Gold and Black Metal are pretty much my go-to base colors for just about every metallic that I do because they are so easy to put on the model. They just lay on incredibly thin. Uh, even if it's super watery, it'll end up self-leveling and being crazy thin with no loss of detail. So here he is, we've got all of the metallic bits like the chains and some of the mechanical parts and all of his joints of his armor painted in with that scale. And uh, for this guy, I decided to do the joints metallic just because I wanted some color separation without pure black. Just something a little different. So he's got a couple of little fleshy tubes on his free arm there and we're just gonna knock those in with some warlord purple it's kind of a pinkish purple that's good for fleshy stuff uh, fleshy chaos stuff which is why I'm using it on this uh, tube that's going into his arm kind of like it's been grown over with the uh, the chaos taint rather than just being a steel tube or a, a mesh steel tube then we're gonna paint his big old vein on his bicep with some dark Prussian blue I'm Cutting it in pretty opaque on this vein because one of the things that we're going to do in the finishing step is come back with the airbrush and some really thinned out transparent flesh paint and re-airbrush some of his skin over the areas that we put a wash on to kind of soften the skin tone out and give it a really nice kind of semi-realistic look. Which is why I'm going so dark with that blue because when we airbrush over top of it, it'll soften it out so it looks like it's a big blue vein under the skin. 
And then just, you know, some basic black for the power cable of his uh, plasma pistol. Just going to knock that in. And then uh, in between cuts, I'm going to go in with some more of our scale 75 black metal and paint in the exposed metal wiring in those tubes. So on his uh, power cable, there's a couple of places where the, the rubber is worn away. And on that little tube going into his arm, there's some of it worn away. So I just went in, cut those in. Uh, going with blue for the wrapping on his chain axe, just because it's a nice color to pair with the red. And we've already done the same blue workup on the little tufts of hair coming out of his headdress. So it just goes together well, rather than trying to do it with uh, leather, which is kind of going to blend in with all of the other red colors or uh, something like white, which is going to kind of clash with all of the skull stuff because we use that color for the, the bone. Cool. So now we're going to go to our gloss varnish and I'm just going to be thinning this out in the airbrush with some flow improver and some airbrush thinner and spraying it all over this guy. So by the time we're done, it's going to have a really, really shiny uh, gloss sheen over the entire model. And the reason that I like doing this is because not only does it seal and protect the paint already on the model, but it lowers the surface tension on the model quite a bit. And that's gonna help us when we do our wash because we're gonna be putting it all over and that wash is just gonna like flow right over it and only settle in the recesses. And here we go with the wash. I'm using the Army Painter system with some quick shade wash mixed medium, uh, dark tone, strong tone, and red tone, which is basically black, brown, and red all mixed together so that I can put it all over the mini. And then once that's dry, we're gonna hit it with the matte varnish from the airbrush. And it's gonna seal all that in there and protect it and also take away any of that nasty shine from the gloss varnish. Just spraying it all over and uh, letting it dry and set up really good. All right, so here he is all set up. You can see that he's nice down to a matte finish again. And he's basically at a uh, like tabletop ready stand right now. Like all we'd have to do is just block in that little rock that he's jumping off of and slap him on a base. Uh, we're gonna finish this guy, like do all of the final touches and take him up to that really nice display level over on my live stream on Twitch. So if you haven't followed me over on Twitch, make sure to follow the link in the description and hit that follow button so you can catch the end result live. I'll catch you later.